Call to order. Please stand if we pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Oof. Good evening, fellow chairman. This time, I will begin with the roll call. <coughs> Marcus Major. Jaden Bailey. Here. Alan Stork. Here. William Gutschalk. Here. Jeff Spink. Here. Doug Tystead. Not here. Not here. Robert Owens. Here. Steve Skeet. Here. Wolf Schmidt. Here. Steve Rosenthal. Here. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. I have a motion to approve and a second. I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stork? Yes. William Goodchalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Abstain. I was absent. Steve Ski? Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Oh, I'm standing over there. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. Secretary's report? All right, good evening, Commissioners. Um, we have a busy agenda today, so um, we'll try and keep everything moving along. You have three items on the consent agenda, so if you guys approve the regular agenda, this will automatically approve those three items. Uh, of course, if you need to take any of those off for discussion, you are free to do that. Um, on the regular agenda, we have two plats that are requesting exceptions. Those are not public hearing items, um, but you will have to obviously review them individually. Uh, we also have a request for a special use permit and three rezones. Those four cases do require public hearings, and of course, uh, which we allow the public to comment on. Uh, public comment is limited to three minutes per person. I just wanted to remind everybody of that. So, otherwise, um, that is the extent of your agenda. So, if you have any questions, let me know. Amy, on the um, special use permit, mm -hmm. uh, we've had public hearing on that before. Did we close the public hearing portion, or we have to open it again for this one? This is a new application. Um, we have reviewed this case in the last tw uh, 12 months. However, the Board of County Commissioners did waive that 12-month reapplication period, so this is a brand new application. But didn't we hear it since then? Didn't we hear it once already? I thought we had, but oh, we heard it new application? No, no, this is, the, this is the first time you are hearing this newest application. They did submit a TSUP, but that was to the Board of County Commissioners, not to this body. Okay. It seems like we've heard it before. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as it is written? So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Goodchalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal. Yes. Congratulations. Oh, do you? Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. Where we at? Does it really need to say now on it or are there any declarations? Maybe just what? Are there any declarations? Uh, I'll probably need to ask her. Ask her. Yeah, the board board. Hey, yeah. are there any declarations tonight? Is there, Mr. You know, Chairman, that I have to recuse myself on uh, yeah, 230, or excuse me, yeah, 092 and 93. Yeah, the first one, 9 alpha. Okay. All right, thank you. 
Yeah, that's right up front. That's what I was looking at. That's right up front. Okay. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now hear case DEV 23-092 and 093. Preliminary and final plat, Sunnyside Estates. Second, as outlined in the posted agenda, this is not a public hearing item. The planning staff will now give a staff report. Um, as mentioned, this is case number DEV 23-092 and 093. This is a request to pre uh, for a preliminary and final plat of Sunnyside Estates second edition. Um, as, as the name would suggest, this is the second edition to the Sunnyside Estates uh, cross access easement subdivision. Um, this second edition, as you will see in the um, final plat as shown above, is for a three lot um, addition onto the existing cross access easement. So this is, would also be a part of that cross access easement subdivision. Um, they are just extending the existing roadway, um, private roadway up into a cul-de-sac where three lots would access off of it. Um, they are requesting an exception from lot depth to lot width on lot um, three there, which is in the southwest corner of this subdivision because it does not meet our requirements for a lot of that size. Um, otherwise, staff has provided a full review in the staff report, so if you have any questions, let us know. Does the applicant wish to speak? Good evening. Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th Street. Um, Amy addressed it. We do have a building setback line on the south for a gas line that was uh, it's 50 feet off the center line of the gas line. They never did reply stating they wanted it, didn't want it, but we did show it. So nobody builds too close to that gas line, which is on the south side of that property. Other than that, the, the request for the lot to depth, if the preliminary plan was up, you would see more configuration of the, how the ponds lay in there, and it would make more sense for you to see why that's getting requested. But here to answer any questions if you have any. Questions? Is there any additional information to be presented? Thanks, Joe. No, sir. Are there questions or comments from the members of the commission? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the exception for the. I hereby approve the exception to Articles 50, Section 40.3. Dot I lot the depth issue for Sunnyside Estates 2 subdivision is submitted by the application based on the finding that all three criteria of the exception has been met. I'll entertain a second. I'll second. Is there discussion of the motion? All right, I'll do a roll call vote. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Oh, he had to step out, sorry. Abstain. Uh, William Gutchoff? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. The motion is carried by a vote of <clears throat> I count this up. Yep, seven to three. Seven to zero. The motion is carried by a vote of seven to zero. I'll entertain a, <clears throat> a motion to approve the plat. Restate the motion who made it. I move that we uh, approve the preliminary and final plat of case number DEV uh, 92 and 93 for Sunny Side Estates based on proposed conditions as outlined in the staff report. Second. 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 
Any discussion of the motion for the second? Any motion on final plan? Okay. I'll entertain another roll call vote. <clears throat> Jaden Bailey? Yes. William Gutchalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Yes. And Steve Rosenthal? Yes. Seven to zero. Motion carry seven to zero. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item no earlier than <clears throat> September the 27th, 2023 at 9 a.m. in the Leavenworth County Courthouse. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now hear case DEV 23-102 and 103, preliminary and final plat. Dodge addition as outlined in the posted agenda. This is not a public hearing item. I'm all over your place with all the notes. The planning staff will now give a staff report, please. Absolutely. Um, case DEV 23-102 and 103. Is a request for a preliminary and final plat for Dodge Edition. The <coughs> property is located um, at uh, on Cantrell Road. Um, the applicant is requesting to divide this parcel into two lots. Um, access would be coming off of Cantrell and I believe 171st. Um, they are requesting an exception from the <coughs> maximum sized accessory structure that can be on a lot without a principal structure. Um, which is 600 square feet. They have two existing agricultural buildings on this lot that's above that. The reason why the exception would be required is because they are creating two lots that are less than 40 acres in size. That's the cutoff in our regulations. Both lots are going to be 32 plus acres. Um, so it's close, but regardless, it does not meet the regulations as presented. Otherwise, staff has done a full review. It meets all the other regulations. Um, and they have provided their request for exception in the packet. So if you have any questions, let us know. Does the applicant wish to speak? I'm Tom Dodge. Hi. Um, our intentions were to split the property between my sister and I, the other owner, in equal portions, and it happened to be that each building landed on each side. Um, the building to the west is just a pole barn for hay with a um, ceiling on it, and the building to the north is a old pole barn that has an open base with three walls um, kind of run down. And so, yeah, that's our reason for asking for the exception. Do you have any questions? Or? No. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. I believe it's on. It's just we're going to have to, yeah, we'll have to, as as we ask for people to come up to the mic, just get closer to the mic when you're speaking into the mic so we can hear you. But I heard you, Tom, and I wasn't wearing my hearing aids. You know? Normally I got my hearing aids in. Is there any additional information to be presented? Are there any questions or comments from the members of the commission? Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to approve the exception. Case DV 23-102 and 103, primary. I move that we approve the exception to Articles 50, Section 40.3H, Building Conformance with the Zoning regulations of the Dodge Addition subdivisions 05 submitted by the application based on findings that all three criteria of the exception has been met. Second. Excellent. I have a motion to say, is there any, is there any discussion of the motion? Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Jane Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Gutchalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes.
Steve Skeet? Yes. We, uh, Wolf Schmidt? Yes. And Steve Rosenthal? Yes. Eight to zero. The motion is carried by a vote of eight to zero. I'll entertain a motion to approve the plat restated in the motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve case number DEV 23-102 and 103 as presented by staff in consideration of the uh, golden factors. I have a second. Second. I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William William Gutchalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Will Schmidt? Yes. And Steve Rosenthal. Yes. The motion is carried eight to zero. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item no earlier than September the 27th, 2023 at 9 a.m. in the Leavenworth County Courthouse. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now consider case DEV 23-110, a special use permit for the event center for Whiskey Ridge as outlined in your posted agenda. Public comment portion limited to three minutes. Planning staff, staff report. Okay. Um, this is case DEV 23-110, which is a request for a special use permit to operate Whiskey Ridge Event Center at a property located at 19051 Tonganoxie Drive. Um, as mentioned earlier, this is a case that you guys have, or this uh, request has been heard by this planning commission previously. However, it did go through the formal public hearing process. It was denied at the Board of County Commissioners, um, but they did waive the 12 month resubmittal requirement per our regulations so which means that they can apply within that 12 month period which they have done so um so a little bit of background this is a request for an event center um as the site plans show uh, there is an existing house on the site that they have uh, re uh, remodeled it um, and it'll be a part of the event center venue they have also built a um approximately 8,000 square foot venue facility that's um, towards the back of that property there um, where they will be hosting events most likely on the weekends. Um, there might be an occasional weekday event but I, their business plan is more catered towards weddings. Um, so weekends is kind of their target frame. Um, they are proposing to have uh, wet events up to 300 people. Um, or smaller um, they will have outdoor ceremonies but most of the events will take place inside um, all of the receptions will be taking place inside at least it's what they indicated in their narrative um, as you can see on the site plan they have provided areas for parking so that square there it has been uh, converted into a gravel parking lot that can accommodate up to 180 vehicles they also have a fire emergency lane that sits to the east of the existing venue facility. Um, in regards to the, the venue itself, they have obtained a commercial building permit. They have installed a sprinkler system in that facility. It was inspected by the local fire district. We received an email which was included in your packet saying that they have inspected it and it meets their requirements. Um, they have also uh, installed a commercial septic system for the use of that facility um, and so forth. So they have met all of the building components requirements that we have adopted per the county. Um, I also just want to mention that the existing house will be used as um, accommodations for people using the event space. So they will have overnight accommodations, which our regulations do permit for this type of use. So. Um, if Unless I'm missing something, I know the applicant is in attendance and they will, or his agent is in attendance and they can speak more to specific questions. 
But again, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, the applicant is here. So. I'm like Steve, I thought we've already heard this. But then he, he did the thing was before the fire station. Okay. Yes. yes. Upon opening the public comment portion of this hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give your full name and address each time you begin to speak. This is necessary since this public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. And I believe we have a limitation of three minutes. Is that right? Does the applicant wish to speak? Good evening. Chip DeMoss, 16582 Douglas Street, Bay Sur. I'm the attorney for Orson LLC. Mr. and Mrs. Lynch were unavailable this evening. So basically, since you're pretty much familiar with this, I'm here if you have any questions. I don't really think I need to add a whole lot more. I think she covered most of everything. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we can't. Closer or just pull that mic closer yeah. to you. Sure. Can you hear me now okay? Now, yes, right. sir. Can we start over? Yes. Okay, Chip DeMoss, 16582 Douglas Street, Baser, Kansas. I'm the attorney for Oris and LLC and Dan and Cindy Lynch. They were unable to make it this evening. I said, I believe the planning department commented on pretty much everything I thought about saying. So if you have any questions, I'm here to try and answer those. And if not, just wait and see. Chip, I'm sure uh, I'm positive they've gone all over the requirements. I think there's 13 of them. Uh, they went over them all, they understand them all, and agree to them all? I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, yeah, I'm sure they did. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> if I could just interject for a second. I forgot, on 14 and 15, these are the new standards that were not put in the staff's agenda. Um, we put them on all the special use permits now. I just wanted to make sure that you guys noted we put it in the presentation, but it's not in a staff report, so... But again, these are just our standardized conditions that we require for all special use permits. Well, based on number 14, I mean, they're, they're pretty far off the road. They're kind of center in that property. So I, I think they, and they've agreed to all 15. They've agreed to meet all 15. I, I believe so, yeah. As far as I know, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with 14 and 15. I imagine they've probably seen the rest of them. Yeah, I think they had to they had to review and sign when they submitted their application. Um, yeah, I mean, most of these conditions were put on the first application that yep. went through, um, or the last one that went through. So I believe they have seen them all, um, and we had we do send these out to the applicant during the review process, so they should be familiar with. This was the case. There was a single point of contention was the fire suppression. Yes, they've addressed that. That's but, it. Right. That's that it. Seems pretty clear. Yeah, we already heard him. He came in and speak. You know, yeah. Incredible area. He brought photos. Remember that? He brought photos oh, of what it looked be like. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful deal. Yes. Another wedding venue, anniversary kind of place. Yes. We're turning 40. <laughs> All right, y'all didn't find that funny. All right. It's late. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I turn 40 again. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chip. We will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in favor of the request. In favor of the request. Okay. We will now hear... Oh, on, on number 15 up there, Mr. Herring just pointed out to me, Reference is Faster Dynamics LLC. Is it? Oh, apologies. Yeah, we'll we will correct that to say. Oh, okay, that's fine. Right. I'll make sure. Mm -hmm. Good call, Joe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Make a note. Joe Heron's awake. Is Joe Heron is paying attention. <laughs> yes. Uh, we will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in opposition of the request. In opposition of the request. Okay. Is there any additional information to be presented? No. Um, the only thing is uh, staff's recommendation is denial in this case only because of the future land use map. 
This area is identified as mixed residential, which isn't supported for commercial type development. So again, that is that is where staff's recommendation is based off of is the future land use map. We can't hear you. Okay. This public comment portion of the public hearing is now closed. Kansas law allows for a petition protesting the decision of the planning commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 days after the date of the public hearing. Additional information on the filing of a protest <laughs> petition can be obtained from the Office of Planning and Zoning. Are there questions or comments from the members of the commission? My comments up here to my colleague was reference your comment of the staff proposal. I mean, it's um, we're, we're trying to do good things, but they don't meet the plan that was worked out in advance. So once again, this is another one of those events past that we have that the county commissioners will see that doesn't meet with the annual plan so right and, and th again this is a policy that we have in place right now um, with it you see it on it almost every single special use permit that comes through yeah okay. all right well I'll entertain a motion on this request I'll go ahead and move that we approve Case number DEV 23-110, special use permit for Whiskey Ridge, with staff recommendations that it meets all the uh, requirements, with the exception of fitting with the comprehensive plan. But since we allow special use permits, uh, I think that overrides the uh, uh, number seven exception. Yes, sir. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Yeah, I'll call roll. Well, well, is there any discussion of this motion first? Any discussion, motion, and a second? Okay, all right. Now I'll call roll. Okay. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Gutschalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Yes. And Steve Rosenthal? Yes. The motion is carried, eight to zero. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item no earlier than October the 4th, 2023 at 9 a.m. in the Leavenworth County Courthouse. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now consider case DEV 23-114, a rezoning request from RR5 to RR2.5 as outlined in the post agenda, it will be requires a public hearing. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. Uh, staff report. Um, for you is case DEV 23114. As mentioned, this is a request to rezone the property there at 21658, which is three parcels um, that are outlined in red there in the image. Um, they are requesting to rezone those three parcels from RR5 to RR2.5. So um, both are rural residential zoning districts. The difference is instead of a five-acre minimum, they are requesting to have a 2.5-acre minimum um, requirement if they choose to subdivide the property. Um, on the property currently, there is a single-family house and some accessory structures. I will note that a lot of this property is located in the floodplain. Um, so, you know, obviously that would restrict development on, along these three parcels. Um, as far as adjacent um, zoning, majority of adjacent properties are zoned RR5. However, down there in the southeast corner, you will see there is RR2.5 zoning. So it is relatively adjacent to the parcel. Um, this, is, this property is also identified as County Road 1 in our future land use policy. Uh, or a future land use map. 
Um, in this area of the County Road 1 corridor, it's identified as rural residential. This is the part of the county where everything south of I-70 is literally identi is, is identified as uh, rural residential for 2.5. Um, so it, it does feasibly match the future land use map uh, designation due to that. Um, otherwise, we, we did have all um, county de departments who review developments review this. There was no outstanding comments. Um, obviously, there's always just concern about roadways and such. However, this is the rezoning phase. This is not the subdivision phase. So um, we are just looking at whether or not that type of zoning would be supported here. So if you have questions, the applicant agent is in attendance. So. Can you guys speak into your microphone so we can hear better? How about now? That works better. Thanks. Appreciate it. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay. Upon opening this public comment portion of the hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give your name and your address each time you begin to speak. This is necessary since this public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Will the applicant come forward? Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th Street. Uh, staff went over it and commented that the southeast corner, it is adjacent to R2.5. It does meet the comp plan. Currently, the in this is not the division of the property or anything, but the owner is just looking to reduce the footprint around the existing house and reduce the footprint of the eastern track on off of the other road. Because it is majority is floodplain, if the floodplain map was up there, it is, it is covered with floodplain. And so he'd have th two smaller tracks and then a large track, which he intends to build a, his next home on. So that is his plan. You know, matches the comp plan here to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks, Jeff. Do we have Thank an you. overlay of the floodplain? I did not provide one. If you need to see it, we can pull it up. But. Sorry. Yeah, I was. I was kind of wondering that floodplains covering a lot of the two smaller sections and a great deal portion of the large portion. The way I'm looking at it, it is mm -hmm. pretty extensive. Yeah. Well, yeah. And this yeah, letter, fit on, but that's about it. Yeah. This letter says they want to put twenty to thirty homes on it. Is that not correct? The letter in your um, application is from a neighbor, so a neighbor's comment. There was also one that was provided for you um, because we received yeah. it after the agenda packet went out. Um, so, uh, but that is not from the applicant or the applicant agent. That is from a neighbor. <coughs> Yeah, we just heard from Joe where it's one. Right. But the letter states after speaking to the owners and finding out exactly what they're planning on doing. That's why I asked. Yeah. Good question. <clears throat> we will now hear from the individuals present wishing to speak in favor of the request. We will now hear from the individuals present wishing to speak in opposition of the request. Is there any additional information to be presented? Um, just staff's recommendation um, based off of the uh, factors that we consider for rezonings, we are recommending approval. You recommend an approval? Mm -hmm. The public comment portion of this peer, uh, public hearing is now closed. Kansas law allows for a petition protect, uh, protesting the decision of the Planning Commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 days after the date of the public hearing. Additional information on the filing of a protest petition can be obtained from the Office of Planning and Zoning. Are there any questions, comments, concerns from the Commission? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. On this request. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve case number DEV-23-114 as presented by staff and that the recommendation recommendation of staff for approval. Sir. Yeah. 
Is there any discussion of the motion or the second? All right. We'll do a roll call vote. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Gutschalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Um, Wolf Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. <clears throat> the motion is carried by a vote of 8 to 0. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item no earlier than October the 4th, 2023 meeting. The Commission agenda is posted on the Leavenworth County website and is available for a public hearing. A viewing, sorry, public hearing. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now consider case DEV 23-117, a rezoning request from RR5 to RR2.5 as outlined in the posted agenda. Requires a public hearing, public comment limited to th uh, three minutes per person. Staff planning report. All right. Um, before you is DEV 23117, um, which again is a rezoning request from RR5 to RR2.5 uh, for the property located at 20571 219th Street. This is just one parcel. Um, the applicant or the property currently has a single family residence and accessory structures. Um, it is obviously zoned RR5. However, for the future land use map, this area is identified as residential 2.5 minimum acreage. So it does meet the future land use map designation. Um, staff has also reviewed it based off of all seven uh, golden factors that we must review it on. Based off that, staff is recommending approval. Um, I also just wanted to point out there is uh, RR 2.5 within close proximity down there in the southwest corner of that map shown. Um, so it is somewhat near other RR 2.5 zoning. So if you have questions the applicant or of me, please ask. The applicant agent is in attendance. Okay. Thank you. Upon opening this public comment portion of the hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against the item upon recognition, please give your name and address each time you speak. This is necessary since the public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Will the applicant please come forward? Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th Street, Leavenworth, Kansas. Um, Staff went over this. It's on a hard surface road, so it does meet the future comp plan. It's within a quarter mile. Um, that's the main thing for the rezone part of it. Uh, just for knowledge, uh, we have talked to the water department unofficially. There is water up there that will be able to be accessed, and he's only looking at putting addi additional three homes up there. And, uh, you know, that would work. So it's a, not an interior road type subdivision. It's just going to be off of 219th Street. But that is the plan. So we're looking at the property to be for you to come back with. It'll come back with the platting process. Platting yeah. process when that happens. Okay. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. <clears throat> we will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in favor of the request. We will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in opposition of the request. Is there any ad additional information yes, to be presented? Okay. The public comment portion of this hearing is now closed. I probably should be banging that gavel every time. <laughs> yeah. Kansas law allows for a petition protesting the decision of the Planning Commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 calendar days after the date of the public hearing. Additional information on the filing of a protest petition can be obtained from the Office of the Planning and Zoning. Are there questions or comments from the members of the commission? I, did I get, what was your recommendation on this? Approval. Approval. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? It's a comp plan, so. Yeah, it's a comp plan. Okay. Yep. 
least we got one or two of them in here tonight. One or two. Okay. All right. This time I'll entertain a motion on this request of Leavenworth County Planning Commission, uh, the case DEV 23-117, a zoning request. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that uh, we approve case number DEV-23-117 as presented by staff and that the recommend recommendation of staff. Second. Okay, give me a second so I can catch up here on the on the things. All right. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Any more discussion of the motion? Okay, I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey. Yes. Alan Stork. Yes. William Wil William uh, Gustchop. Yes. Jeff Spink. Yes. Robert Owens. Yes. Steve Skeet. Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Yes. And Steve Rosenthal? Yes. All right. The motion is carried by a vote of 8 to 0. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item no earlier than October the 4th, 2023 meeting. The commission agenda is posted on the Leavenworth County website and is available for public viewing. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now consider case DEV 23-118, a rezoning request from RR 2.5 to R1-43 as outlined in the posted agenda. This requires a public hearing. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. Uh, staff report. Uh, case DEV 23-118 is a request to rezone. Um, again, this is a, the property is 17679 166th Street. It is currently zoned RR 2.5. The applicant is requesting to rezone it to, should say up there, sorry, R143. Yeah. R1 is a residential zoning district. It's a single family residential zoning district with a me, uh, minimum acreage of 43,000 blah 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 square feet which really is equal to one acre in size so they are requesting to change from 2.5 minimums to a one minimum acre size lots um this property is adjacent to the lee childs subdivision um that subdivision was developed at a one acre um density um they are requesting to match that density essentially with this rezoning request um to, I assume, develop it to match that existing uh, subdivision. Um, the, the future land use map has this area identified as mixed residential, which is a higher density residential zoning or future land use designation. Um, however, uh, there is no public sewer servicing this property. So in order for them to build, they are looking at septic systems. Our regulations allow for septic systems on one acre lots or greater. So they would be matching um, with this rezoning request what the minimum acreage requirement for a septic system, a private septic system um, would be allowed. Um, you might be aware that there was a third phase in the Lee Child subdivision that you guys reviewed not too long ago and, sub and it was subdivided not too long ago. It's that darker green in the northwest area up there above the subdivision. Um, it went through the same process. They requested the R143 zoning designation and developed it out to match the rest of this subdivision. Um, other than that, staff did provide a full analysis. We have received some comments also from the public. There should be a two in your agenda packet and one up at your seats. So if you have any other questions about the staff report, let me know. I do know the applicant agent is in attendance. So. It, but I, I can't remember. The, the, when we met and we discussed those, the ones that you're considering there in the dark green, I don't believe they face the same septic system that we're talking about with this one. They did. It was the exact same situation. Um, they wanted to remember. match the density of the rest of the Lee Child subdivision. Um, to be able to get them to be on septic, you know, you can do one acre or greater per our sanitary code, the county sanitary code. Right. Um, so um, if they kept it at the RR 2.5 zoning, you're talking about 2.5 acre lots or greater. 
that they wanted to match the rest of the subdivision, which is approximately one acre size lots. Um, that's why they requested the R143, and that's where this request is arising from as well. And your staff recommendation again is? Is approval. Because it meets all the criteria. Okay. I take it that Orchard Street is going to run into the new subdivision. So will there be more than one access out of this, or will they be using that orchard to go into the new subdivision? We haven't got to, to the planning. Yeah, component I understand yet. that. So, yeah, um, logic would dictate that yes, that's going to be an extension of the street staff. Would certainly would certainly require that or ask it of the of the subdivider. But at this point in time, we're strictly on the land use component, and as Amy had said before, it meets all the criteria of the comprehensive plan. So, from a staff standpoint, we will recommend approval at the densities that they propose. Yeah, that's for that reason. That, that's what I was going to ask. What we're doing tonight is purely reviewing a proposal, not this, not the property broken out by one-acre lots and not the property broken out and whatever. This no. is purely a proposal this from a 2.5 mm -hmm. to a one-acre area plotted. Correct. So when they subdivide, they will be able to subdivide in accordance with that particular zoning district, when, which in this case is that minimum one acre. But can we give you layout of lots? Can we give no. you street lot? We can't give you any of that at this point because it hasn't been submitted. That but comes at a later time. It comes we at a later this time. Every so time. Yeah. When we're reviewing them. <laughs> I mean, it's been the inherent problem with these being kind of segmented, which I think is why we liked the PUD. P so yeah, P yeah, yeah, exactly. The and caboodle. Now mm -hmm. you're just kind of potentially opening a door that you don't really know what's behind it. I mean, we can hypothesize, but. Well, I, and again, the development plan process, which is what you're speaking to in the in the PD component, only exists in a certain number of zoning districts currently. Now, that may change in the future, but as it stands today, we have to operate underneath the, the right. policies that we currently have. But again, I think from a, just from a pure development standpoint, I think it's logical to assume that you're going to get a very similar product as you have adjoining that. Market would almost dictate that you would, which is why I would guess that we're here tonight. So at that time of uh, planning, that's when you would really consider what type of a septic system would be required. Would it have to be engineered or could if it perk test, would they be allowed to put a standard? Well, uh, if I remember the requirements in the in the sanitary code, and Amy, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they are required to be engineered when they're in these types of densities. But we'll review that, and when we get to the subdivision right. component, we'll certainly have that comment for you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Upon opening this public comment portion of the hearing, those of you who wish to speak either or uh, either for or against this item upon recognition will give your name and address each time you begin to speak. This is necessary since this public hearing is being recorded. Public comment is limited to three minutes per person. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Will the applicant come forward? Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North Fifth Street, Lovewood, Kansas. Uh, again, staff covered it. Uh, Paul's including the comp plan. It matches the use of the subdivision to the west and the subdivision, the new one that was re rezoned and platted within the last couple of years. And to my knowledge, I don't think there's been too many issues up there. Um, I know we're not getting into the development phase of it, but just so everybody knows, and I assume the majority of the people that have stayed are for this, uh, Orchard Street is, the plan is to extend it east to 166th Street. So Orchard Street would not serve as the access to this. It would more serve as an outlet for the existing Lee Child subdivision. Uh, the one-acre lots have to be engineered for septic, as the planners stated. Uh, I don't believe the ones with Emily Childs are. Uh, and detention and storm runoff and everything will be looked at intensely in this. When you get to that small size of lots, uh, that's, you just have to do that. And I've expressed to a couple of the neighbors, you know the plan is that's what they're looking at doing. Uh, 
cut out around the house, two and a half acres, keep a back portion for potential detention, a track, some buffer between some houses that reside pretty close to that south line. Uh, he plans on working with them and uh, making sure it's a very similar product to what he did uh, last year or two years ago. So I have, if you have any questions, if you need me to answer any questions after the public comments on it, uh, please call me back up. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. We will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in favor of the request. In favor of the request. Okay. We will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in opposition of the request. Yes, sir. Please come forward, state your name and address. Position that mic where we can hear you. Thank you, sir. I'm well tuned about the mic use. <laughs> My name is John Matthews, 17629, 166th Street, Baser. Basically, it's the southern border of this whole tract of land. The only question I really have is the character of the neighborhood. They said nearby city limits, Tonganoxy, is more than three tenths of a mile to the northeast. If they don't know where Tonganoxie is, how do we know that this has been surveyed correctly? <laughs> That's my concern. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Apologies, that was an error. It's <laughs> Tongi Baser. Tongi it's all the same, whatever. <laughs> Thank you, John. If we don't know where Tonganoxie is by now, there's something wrong with us. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ken Hancock. I live at 16672 Dunnigan. I uh, live on the southwest side of that property. I've been there 36 years, and I like to quiet. <laughs> I'd rather see it stay at 2.5 if that's what they're going to do, not to 1. That's all i got to say on that. Thank you, Ken. Hi, Tammy Otten, 16843 Morningside Drive in Baser. I am part of the Lee Childs subdivision. Um, if it were my choice, I would have bought a two-and-a-half-acre property, not the one-acre. Um, but that neighborhood was available when we were able to buy here in Leavenworth County. Um, and the neighborhood was quiet. I didn't worry about my kids playing on the street because at that time, there was only one way in and one way out. Um, unfortunately, I was not aware of the phase three, I believe, that just happened, cutting through to Evans off 160, what is that, 170th? Up to Evans. Um, yeah. I would have opposed that as well, the cut through, because now hearing that Orchard may cut through, that's going to increase traffic more than likely into our neighborhood, um, a lot of small children. Second thing is what is going to happen to the traffic flow there at 166th and Evans, there has been a fatality that I'm aware of there. Um, my neighbor was hit a couple of years ago from traffic running the stop sign. Um, my daughters this summer avoided an accident, people not stopping at the stop sign, 166 in Evans. So there's also a property to the east of where they want to reduce it to an acre that's 100 acres. So my fear now is this is going to give way to somebody purchasing the 100 acres it will also be rezoned down to an acre. Now on top of the potential 26 houses, we're going to have another 100 houses come in, and that's just going to be a lot of problems in that area. So I would also request that it stay two and a half acres. We can keep the little charm of a rural baser that I have grown to love and the reason I moved there. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Delbert Rudy, 16650 Dunnigan Road, Baser, Kansas. I guess my extreme concern is uh, runoff water at this time. Can you bring up my property and show them where it's at? Um, it might take a couple of minutes, but I can try. Um... Well, the subdivision over there to the west of where we live 
there's no nothing done to stop the runoff. It runs down, comes through the ditch in front of my house. They've had to tear out the bridge that was across that ditch or creek, whatever you want to call it, and put a larger tube in there, but it still doesn't handle the water. It still comes over my driveway, washes the gravel out, and then to address this property, right now water comes from the north across the northeast corner of my property whenever it rains. Where are you again, sir? Can we see which one's your property? 650 Dunnigan Road. Is he a, where? Are you lot 59, 60, or 61, sir? I believe it's 60. 60? That's an, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Like I say, right now water comes across my property on the northeast corner, and I can only see it getting worse because there's no storm sewers that's going to go in there. It's going to be septic. Well, that handles the septic, but that doesn't handle runoff water. Any questions for me? No, that's a valid concern. We're, we're going to discuss that as we go further into the process, right? I mean, that's part of what you addressed to us is that how they're going to control runoff water, how they're going to control septic, how they're going to control, I mean, all that stuff's going to have to go into effect before anything, yeah, before the final plot's even approved, right? It's a, it's a, it's a component of the engineering phase, yeah. which is a component of the plotting phase. So, you know, again, certainly where and how stormwater detention occurs is going to be a product of the process. I don't know that anybody here is prepared to answer that tonight. I don't want to – I can't speak for the developer. Right. I can only speak to the land use and land use criteria within the existing plans. Right. So as far as, you know, how many CFS are hitting that particular section of his property, I, I don't know those items yet. But we, we will end up going through that through the process. Well, right now it's all grassland. And you start putting in pavement, <coughs> driveways, concrete, asphalt, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to speed up the water. Exactly. I mean, it's already fast with grassland. I know. I've got Exactly. And I get water across my property right now. There's actually a pond on that property that they've taken the dam out of. And Can we so, put on the screen there so we can see this pond? Yeah, I, it's right there at the top. Corner. There it is. There and you can you. see the low spot from the pond down to my property. Yeah. If you go... To the right and down, that's how it cuts across my property. So, so right now you're considering the, the dam, they just the like took the dam out? out? I think they just cut through it with a backhoe. Uh, Bobby McGee, I believe, did that. So the, hmm? okay. Well, like I say, my concern is you're taking it from two and a half acre plots to one acre plots and all the all the pavement that's involved with it. Right now, there's a problem already. I've lived there for 30 years, and it's been a problem since day one. Any questions, gentlemen? You brought a valid point. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Good evening, Marvin Sommerfeld, 16630 Dunnigan Road. I'm right next door to Delbert. Uh, so lot 61. I'm the low spot on the. <laughs> I'm the low spot on the on the street there. So my concern is the hydrology study that needs to happen, water retention. Mr. Bailey, I appreciate your comments. It's hard to be for something or against something when you don't know the plan, other than to say we're going to rezone this. And um, then we, as the neighbors, are just supposed to accept that. And we say, okay, one one acre lots, and then we don't know the plan, how many houses they're going to put in there. We can do the math. Uh, if they keep two acres for the house, that's 24 uh, acres left for that property. So are they going to put 24 houses in there? I don't know. You can't catch that much water. And it is a concern for those of us that live on this side uh, Ken's a little higher, but water runs through there. That's my concern is hydrology retention and uh, hydrology studies and retention of the water that's there. Thank you. Hey, does that, does that, hey, sir, does that creek flood pretty regularly right there by you based on the water runoff that the other gentleman just got through addressing? I've been there two years. It's been lapping at my back door once. Uh, and 
on my property there's retaining walls around the house yeah I can see them um, when it rains most of the time that creek is in the banks but like right now the ground is so hard if we got a hard rain that thing's gonna fill up uh, pretty quick and it has nowhere to go to me it seems like because I, I like to walk in the rain and watch what's happening seems to me the um, culverts under the uh, 166th are pretty small for the capacity that's coming out of there uh, and you just watch all the water in that whole area it has nowhere to go except right through the middle of our properties and it's not a big enough uh, tributary it's dry today but it's been dry for how long now <laughs> three weeks <laughs> maybe all right thank you thank you sir sure yes sir <laughs> Yes, sir. Each time you have to come back. Ken yes, Hancock, 16672 Dunnigan Road, Baser, Kansas. Uh, talking about the water and everything, I, like I said, I've been there 36 years. When I first moved there, Delbert's property and my property had three-foot culverts. And uh, when Lee Childs put it in there, even before he put it in there, the water would run up over my driveway and up over the road and over into the south of the road over there into the neighbor's yard and they come through and put bigger tubes in i don't know what they're six foot now it still backs up goes over my driveway over the road and over delbert's up in his yard way up in my yard marvin gets a lot and i believe before marvin was there i don't know he asked john maybe did the comstocks have water in their basement well yes they did uh, it was about the same time we were building an addition. Right. And in fact, our addition is a little like a big swimming pool. There was no roots there. But they had uh, several inches of water on the whole basement floor of that house. Hey. And yes, Randy hey. can also hey. experience. Hey, sir. Hey, sir, we'll have, to, we'll have to have you come back up and discuss that. It's a hearing. You're supposed to be addressing us only right now. Okay. I'm but, it, but, but, but you brought a valid point. I mean, we've got a common theme. The point that there was several, yeah. two other owners that lived in there, and Pipkins had his own uh, cleaning service. That's what he did is cleaned up messes like that and everything. So I know he was in there several times cleaning his place. I forgot to bring that up the first time. Like Thank I you. said, if it rains hard enough and long enough, it will back up, goes over the road, goes up to my neighbor, Rod, across the street, up to his swimming pool. And it backs, keeps backing on up, on down the line to Workman's Place. So that's another concern. Thank you. we got a common theme, water. And we're in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Audrey Moody, and I live at 15012 Parallel Road, Baser, Kansas. And I had purchased a two-and-a-half-acre uh, plot there on 166th Street with the hope of uh, building a home and a barn. And I thought it was a rural area at the time when I purchased it, and I would be disappointed to live in a suburban area again, uh, which I consider the one acre. And I believe you have my comments in your packet. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Ross Moody. I live at 17940 Cantrell Road, Linwood. And I'm a ways away from there. I realize this. But uh, bottom line is, the people that moved out there, they went moved out there with the pretense that they were going to have neighbors. Um, they had two and, acre, two and a half acre tracks because they didn't want to live in the city. And now what we're doing is some somebody's coming in and they're going to make more money by, by putting in one-acre tracks rather than selling those two-and-a-half-acre tracks. And these people that are in the surrounding area that have two-and-a-half-acre tracks, they bought it for a reason, and they didn't want to live in a housing addition. So I don't see how it's even comes close to being fair to them that now we're going to sneak in this division. That, that people don't want because that's not why if, if they wanted to live in a subdivision they would have moved to a subdivision but they chose not to 
And so this isn't in, in their best interest at all. To me, it's, it's in one person's interest, and that's the developer, and that's it. And I also know that the Roads and Childs Edition, I don't know how old it is. I drove through there yesterday. They're not in the best of shape. Well, now the county's maintaining them roads. Okay, so as a taxpayer, you know, I live out on, on Cantrell Road. It's a gravel road. That's okay. But I've lived there since 1988, and my services went down and down every year. Used to be my road was, the snow was cleared. It didn't make a difference if it was 18 inches of snow. It was cleared at 6 o'clock in the morning. Last few years, we get a heavy snow, and it's 3, 3.30 in the afternoon before the road grader comes down. And the road grader parks a mile from me. Explain this to me. Like I said, I'm paying more and more taxes. My land went up 85% this year. 85%. We, we ain't got to the bottom of that yet. But yet my services go down and down and down. And it's because of additions like this, now the snow plows go in there, and the people who have been paying taxes in the county forever, they're getting neglected while these new people are moving in. And that ain't right. And if a developer's going to put something in, he needs to build good roads so we ain't got to go back in in two years for the county to start maintaining them roads. And it's all about greed. And, and I'm totally against it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Can I make one more comment? Sir, please state your name. Address again. Delbert Rudy, 16650 Dunnigan Road. Could you zoom in on my property, please? You may not be able to see it there, but there's two drainages that come together on that property. Yep. One from the south and one from the west. Yeah. I just wanted to state that also. And that's Marvin's concern. Yeah. When all that water comes down there, you've got no place to go. Yep. It's hard to make an observation on what the map of the trees and everything else. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. It's a little bit difficult to be able to look at this picture that they have and be able to say where the flow of the water goes. Is that inside of 60 or inside of 61 where the two meet? It's actually inside 60. That's my property. Okay. It's on the southeast corner. Into the right. Yeah, they come it's together right there. Out. One comes from the south, one comes from the west. Yeah. There's a culvert coming from the south and one under my driveway. That's where they move. <coughs> and now there's potential to add more from the north. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you sir. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any additional information to be presented? <clears throat> public comment portion of this public hearing is now closed. Kansas law allows for this petition protesting the decision of the Planning Commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 calendar days after the date of the public hearing. Additional information on the filing of a protest petition can be obtained from the Office of Planning and Zoning. Are there questions or comments from our commission, members of our commission tonight? I, I do have a comment. I, I totally agree with Jaden on this. It, it's hard to approve something when we don't get to see the big picture all at once, and, and I understand the process of this comes later and this comes later, but it'd be really nice to see something just sketched in with the pencil that says, hey, here's where we're coming in and out. Here's where we think we're going to put a water retention pond to satisfy our neighbors. It, it, this is a tough decision when we don't have all the deals. And if we approve it, and we say, yes, we're going to approve these one-acre tracks. This gentleman comes in next month. He said, hey, here's my plot. Then it's super hard to say, nope, we're not going to approve that. Because we kind of already did approve it. We just didn't approve the stipulations that we're going to put on a person. So it's, I mean, I just want to put that concern out there that I don't think anybody on this board just wants to say, yeah, this is a great thing. But it does meet the guidelines under our current our current guidelines. That brings, um, up, that brings up to me the bigger point, though, which is we all reference this. 
fits the guidelines. This fits the yeah. We all reference that this fits the comprehensive plan. This fits the guidelines, but we're basing that off a point of contention for the two years that I've been on the committee. That it's a comprehensive plan that was unilaterally accepted by five county commissioners. That wasn't the one that was recommended to them by this board, and so it opened the door for developers, excuse me, to come in and see, hey, that's what they want. But you have all the citizenry that through the survey that was paid for didn't want that and purchased properties based off the existing zoning. So that to me is the, the crux of the problem is that what our guiding document doesn't reflect what the citizens of the county want. And that that's what we have to base decisions off of. And so when your starting point is flawed, nobody's going to be happy moving forward. So I, it's just, even though I know we're talking about this isolated case, it, it's kind of a sheds light on the really the bigger issue. So if I could interject just to add to your point, that is why there's a statutory requirement to review that comprehensive plan on an annual basis. So as conditions change, you have the opportunity to reflect those changes in that plan, whether it be land use, transportation, community facilities, et cetera, et cetera. You review the entire plan to do that. Uh, your point, Mr. Owens, is, is well taken, but it is a policy issue. And as we've talked about before, that we will be doing an annual review of the policy. And if, if this board wants to recommend a development plan process for all residential development, you can certainly recommend that. Okay. And it, that is in line with other areas of the metro. Now, again, at the end of the day, that policy is either accepted or modified at the you know, Board of County Commission level. But it certainly is something that you could discuss. Uh, and there is a joint meeting, as you know, in the January, February time frame that you can bring that up with the governing body and hash that out. But as it stands today with this particular action, again, I would tell you that, that the only thing on the table that under the current guidelines is the land use element. And from a staff standpoint, we can only recommend what the policy allows us to exactly. recommend. And so what you're hearing from us is not a personal opinion. It's right. simply it complies with the policy or it policy. doesn't comply. Right. Yeah. So I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. I think where some of the opinion thing can come into some of the opinion thing can come into play is in the golden factors and the character of the neighborhood. You know, even though we have these guiding documents, things of that nature, if the neighborhood isn't for this, that to me that reflects the character of the neighborhood. Well, my thoughts on this is that where does it stop in one acre? It's like the one lady commented across the streets, a hundred acres. Are we going to have a hundred? Well, it won't be 100, but a lot of homes on on uh, one-acre lots. And as more properties we put on one-acre lot is ruining the city's possibility of ever expanding uh, out to that area with sewers and stuff like that. So uh, I know uh, Lee Childs got expanded. You can say that was just an extension of that subdivision. Uh, I think there's we need to not have this be a policy that everywhere around we're going to have one acre lots. I think it's a poor decision. It's it's not what the citizens of this county want. And I think that uh, it's, it's probably time to stop doing that. And that's my opinion on it. So. My next comment is, how close are we to the base or city limits from here? I mean, we are outside the 660-foot rule. We, I mean, are we 920-foot? Are we 665-foot? Can, can you put the other picture back up? On yeah, that can you bring up the map again and can, zoom you out? Can, you can see yes, the city. I think it's, if I remember correctly, I think it's a, it's a quarter of a mile away. Okay. So, it, you know, there's there's a... <clears throat> substantially more than your so your so there's a good chance that baser is going to annex this well eventually it, I mean, it is a possibility but for cities to annex they have to be willing to and again i can't speak for baser lansing or any right. other jurisdiction they have to be willing to invest if you're going to annex there is a timeline a statutory timeline to provide services that is a large bill for yeah, for mm. any jurisdiction to to accommodate. Correct. So you know they don't arbitrarily do it. There's a lot of thought process that goes in gets involved in that budgetary items that get involved in that. So whenever it's within that 660 foot rule, we always go to the adjoining the adjoining community and say, okay, what 
your standards are applicable within this area and we allow them to make their comments now so far since i've been here and that's only been five months there hasn't been a lot of uh, hasn't been a lot of feedback from the adjoining communities and i understand why because again those utilities are the driving factor in annexation most of the time so uh, to answer your question yes we have that urban growth area that we accommodate via statute around each one of the towns and logically the higher density residential that's adjoining those towns should be in those communities but we can't make those communities pull those properties in so then we're left to deal with our own regulations and what those regulations allow and again when you're dealing with land use it is the golden factors when you're dealing with platting platting is a technical review so they're they're two different things exactly so just keep that in mind as you as you deliberate but planning doesn't mean next week or next year or no. 10 years or 20 years no. could even be 50 years i mean what's going to happen in the future and what are we going to put how many roadblocks are we going to put up for that development not to come again whatever decision you make needs to be rooted in your policy and for a lot of different reasons so well on the conditions you have you have check marks on not met and met both so and, and that was based off of some concern but overall staff's review is that it does so when you when you see that what she's attempting to do is draw your attention to a borderline condition okay while it does meet the letter of the law it is something that you should consider when you're reviewing this application that's typically what those what mm -hmm. those mean so there are some criteria that may not meet the letter of the law but the majority of that spirit and intent of that part of the regulation has been met so that that's the intent of that particular section uh, um, Mr. Herring, did you have additional paperwork? I mean, I saw you hold something up. I didn't know if that was in our packet or not. No, not in your packet. It was basically everything that I talked about, a concept just to lay out. I didn't know if you guys want to see it. It's not affecting this deal. But how I said it, it was that is his intent. You're right. One of you can have them. But... It did not make it in the packet. We can't see that. It, it doesn't pertain to what's happening here. I mean, it I wasn't part of the publication. I would prefer that you wait to see any drawing until we get to the planning component versus something that's being presented tonight that the public hasn't had the opportunity to to look look at. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. which gets back to the point of you're you're just opening the door for is this something for more of this to be allowed. Well, and, and, and the gal brought up a good point about, and we've heard this before about subdivisions, that we've let them go ahead and change something. We don't make them put in sidewalks out here. There's no sidewalks out here in these subdivision. There's no street lights. There's no fire hydrants. So if we just keep letting them go and go and go. Well, fire I'm, hydrants are funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I, and I get that, and I, I get that the water departments are – a big concern six inch lines we only got four but at some point we're going to have to say hey if we're going to develop our county let's let's develop it as a neighborhood and at least put in some sidewalks i mean they're right you're, you're going to have kids riding their bikes down these streets That's we're going to bring in another it's when you're flirting with letting a little bit of city creep into the country you right. can't can't have best of both worlds you have to that's where to me the character of the neighborhood has to be the guiding light and things like this because otherwise it's too messy and you well, can't right when you're talking about big subdivisions like that you need curb and gutter you need street lights you need sidewalks you need all those i mean an acre is not well the common theme much bigger than some city lots are the common theme tonight is water control Mm -hmm. So if it's not in the city and it's still in the county, what well, rules and regulations well, are there in order to control and, and that's another, for, for a neighborhood in county versus city, that's something which gets else after what you're saying? We hear rooftops. <clears throat> we need rooftops. We need rooftops for tax revenue. To me, it just seems like a massive Ponzi scheme because all you're doing is creating a situation where you're going to need more infrastructure. You're going to need more things like water and all this. That What are you going to have to do? Pay for it. And you're going to have to go right back to the same scenario. Need more root. I mean, it's 
a self-fulfilling prophecy. The, the trouble with that, too, Road and Bridge, for years we've been battling this, and I have been on this thing a long time, so I, we've been battling this for, for many, many years. But uh, Public Works says the taxes that they get from a house, the little bit that they get, is pretty much to maintain the road in front of their house. Nothing right. that's going to build new yeah. roads or improve right. the roads that are there. So the more people you're putting on these roads, the roads are going to deteriorate faster with no money to put it on there. You listen to the county commissioners, they're worried about their roads. Well, our bridges. We're, yeah, we're going to fix bridges. two this year out of 27. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're well, really it's, concerned, it's, and they, they should be because we're getting – too much growth, too much traffic on roads that are not able to handle that growth. Well, and that's, I mean, that's that's part of the reason why we're talking about this tonight. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we have a... Can I make a comment? The, the, the hearing's closed, okay. Bart. Thanks. Appreciate it. So um, the, uh, the hearing's closed. I understand that, but we may have some kind of input that may help. Well, I, I think I'm going to be able to help you when we continue this dialogue. Just, just bear with me. Okay. Um, part of what we're talking about is it, it, it is growth. Mm -hmm. Baser and Tonganoxy are blowing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, that is the place to be. That's where everybody wants to live. That's where, rightfully so, everything's there. The schools are great. It's kind of a country living as a city. You're still kind of in the country. It's great. And these type of neighborhoods, I mean, it's going to whether we do a one acre or whether we do two and a half acres, <laughs> It's coming. When she addressed the 100 acres, it may not be right now. It may be five years from now. It's coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, you got to have somewhere for these folks to go. you got to have somewhere for them to build homes. you got to have somewhere for people to live. It's happening. I don't. The other part of it is, you know, we're talking about the cities, mm -hmm. the county having. Well, the cities are having to figure out yeah. schools. Right. That's not Okay, the so, I mean, so, so, so we're going to grow these neighborhoods. And we don't have the school structure either. So, I mean, it's, it's a self-licking ice cream cone. It's like, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. But you bring up whether it's one acre or two and a half acre. When you look at the whole county and the how many people can fit, that's a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. And so the yeah. only way that you can curtail anything and have any shot at maintaining the type of lifestyle that your your current tax-paying citizens, tax, well, tax citizens desire is to have some sort of control over how many people can come in. That's the only it's the only way you cut a shot. Right. So there are ways to drive that via policy and the and the primary way is driving it through density. But again, I don't know that that is a discussion for tonight. It certainly is a policy discussion down the road, but that is typically how it's handled. You address criteria based on density. And I think that's certainly germane to this particular conversation. I mean, that's well, another issue. It's, but it's but, another issue, yes. Uh, Chairman, so, I mean, what, there's, there's, there's goodness in growth. There's goodness in growth, and there's also bad in growth. I mean, it, you know, it's a double-edged sword here. Um, let so, me ask you this. There's been times where we have we have been where we are right now, and we have not made a decision. <coughs> we have proposed to continue to table this. Is that an opportunity for tonight? Somebody would have to make a motion and vote right, on it. Right, but I'm just asking. Is that something? Well, there are – you can you can table in, in a public hearing. You know, yeah. And if you want additional information, there are, are timelines for being able to table that. But understand that the rezoning process is a statutory driven, driven process with protest periods that are components of that. So – Essentially, you. you know, if you need additional information that's specific, there is a possibility to do that. But again, you've got statutory timelines that drive the decision, whether it's for or against. And once that decision is made here, it moves on to the board, and right. they can take the appropriate action there. Just to piggyback on that, the public hearing has been closed. So yes. if you want to reopen a public hearing, we have to notify it. We have to republish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so it can't be opened once it's, once we, it's closed. If we're going to table it, don't we have to ask for some guidance, some specific, specific thing that's going to help us make right. additional information? 
Yeah, that's why I'm well, asking. It, it sounds like there's paperwork. more paperwork, but we can't see it because it wasn't submitted. So maybe that would help in that decision. I don't know. Well, I don't think that's we can do that because it's not required on a rezone. Okay. I'm just asking all the questions. Mm -hmm. So from a – go ahead. I was just uh, – for those that are watching, I, my name is Misty Brown. I'm Deputy County Counselor. I heard some people in the background wanting to be folks are, so so they understand that is who I am. If you are going to have to table it, we will need to table it to a specific timeline. I would, re would not recommend going more than a month, and I would also recommend asking for a specific reason to table it. And if you plan to reopen the public hearing, we do need to know that so we can send out the appropriate notices. <laughs> That's, that's the answer I was looking for. Thank okay. you, ma'am. So my next question is, can we table this and ask them to come back with a PUB-type development plan, or can we not ask that, John? Not possible. Well, a PUD would be a different zoning classification, okay. which, would, which would require another application process and a development plan. So this, in my opinion, needs to run its course, either okay. for or against and move for whatever specific reasons you make your determination. Again, it's statutorily driven. There, there are mandatory timelines there. We're so all if, okay. we're also, if we deny this, we're not saying they can't develop it. Yeah. No, just develop no. It. I'll, 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 this, this goes in front of the county commissioners, and they make the final decision. They can, they can change our decision. That, that's that that's too. right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. And but ever, that whatever well. whatever <laughs> determination you make, please make sure it's rooted. Right. Right. Absolutely. In the applicable rules. Is there any questions that I have left off? No. Nope. Is there anything that needs to be discussed any further? Well, I think yeah. that we've really gotten kind of off the point here. We're looking at a rezone, not a plan. Right. 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 And that's hard for the public to understand that if we've been through it, the engineering studies are all going to have to be done on the preliminary and the final plot. The water runoff studies are all going to have to be done on the final and preliminary plot. And at that point, there's no guarantee at all that they'll be able to build on one acre. Yeah, it could They've be. They've got to control that water. They can't flood their neighbors out. They're not. It's not going to happen. And the, well, to be clear, they could build on one acre, but I don't know that they would make, meet the density they would need to do a development. But again, that's all speculative yeah. with, in the absence of any engineering. Right. Well, Which is a lot of work goes into. This is just the initial phase. This is strictly this is purely strictly the initial phase, and, and then whatever we decide tonight still goes in front of the county commissioners. Yes, sir. Well, yes. And we could, when the plat comes, we could deny the plat. I mean, yes. you know, it doesn't mean that we'll have to approve the plat. But the, right now we do, we're deciding, do we want one acre zoning or we want two and a half acre zoning? Yeah. Well, and like you said, that's, that's a president for the other 100 acres. Yes. Yeah. Right there. It, sets, it also sets what type of research they want to do. I mean, right. it sets right. the stage. Okay. I've asked for questions, comments from the members of the commission. I will now entertain a motion on this request for case DEV 23-118, a rezoning request from RR 2.5 to RR 1.43 or 143. Thank you. It's abbreviated, so 143, as outlined in this posted agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, for case DEV dash two three dash one one eight reason in the ESA and PCDI uh, that we move I move to deny this rezoning um, in consideration of the gold factors specifically character of the neighborhood uh, as well as some of the other concerns that we spoke of I appreciate that you've noted the gold factor but would you care to elaborate for the record some of the other concerns uh, yeah, uh, some of the other concerns would be hydrology, um, density, um, distance from the city, uh, as well as plan of controlled growth within the county. Effect of nearby property. <laughs> Effects of nearby property, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Normally I get to ask that question, but thank you. I appreciate that. That's pretty good. Because 
because you used to put me on the spot when I propose things like that. You say, "Well, would you like to elaborate as to why?" You know. Okay. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I have a motion to deny the rezone. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Is there discussion on the motion? Okay. I have a roll call vote to deny the motion. Jaden Bailey. And just to be clear, if you vote yes, it's to deny. Yes. Okay. Yes. Alan Stewart? No. William Gutschalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? No. Robert Owens? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Wolf Schmidt? Yes, to deny. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. I have seven yes to one no. Motion carries to deny. I'm sorry, two no. Six and two. I'm sorry, I didn't count one of my nose. Appreciate that. Six, six two vote. Motion carries to deny. The Board of County Commissions will consider this item no earlier than October the 4th, 2023 meeting. The commission agenda is posted on the Leavenworth County website and is available for public viewing. We are dismissed. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion and have a second. We are adjourned. <laughs>